putting it in action is entirely different thing. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Rupaya ji. The problem is really very grave, very serious. Uh, now, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Sushil Kandagaukar, who is going to speak about uh, higher education. Dr. Kandagaukar uh, has been uh, uh, a professor of management and he was also director of the Institute of Management Development and Research in Pune. And uh, he has written a very wonderful book on institution building in higher education, which is under publication. And he has been associated uh, with the humanist movement for uh, more than 20 years. So uh, let me invite Dr. Kanagaukar to speak about challenges before higher education. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I have written about uh, 350 pages on higher education. Uh, so I am not sure whether I will be able to talk for 10 minutes fully. So there are so many things to tell. So I may not tell anything. But I will try. Thank you for this opportunity. I will start with a statement on the dichotomy of uh, higher education in India. Uh, the dichotomy is uh, the stakeholder of higher education are two students and the faculty in the sense that the whole career and the future life is dependent on higher education the tenure and scholarship of faculty and the whole career and future prospects of students are dependent so they are to my mind the key stakeholders they have re risk or stakes in it. But if you see who are the power holders of uh, higher education, the power holders have less to do with education, but mainly something to do with power. That is, the state is the greatest power holder of higher education. After the state, then the, the, the agents of the state, that is the regulatory bodies, UGC, AICT, then the governor who appoints uh, vice chancellors, the vice chancellors, and the promoters of colleges. These are power holders. And in contrast, the faculty and the students are at the receiving end. Actually, they are uh, sandwich between two forces. The students are demanding particular faculty, demanding better and better education. And uh, yes, the state is insisting on certain kind of uh, policies and curriculum. And so they are uh, unable to do justice. And their own issues are neglected. So this is what I am telling you about the imbalance of stakeholders. Now, what are the consequences of this kind of dichotomy? Uh, one obvious reason is you must have recognized that there is more and more uh, state intervention or government intervention in universities, even IIMs and IITs, and in colleges. Uh, the, and there is also violence. Campus violence is also there exemplified. For example, well-known example of uh, this uh, JNU in 19 uh, years ago, there was a campus violence on JNU. The faculty and students uh, were uh, beaten up. And uh, the problem is still not resolved. Uh, JNU faculty and students are still complaining that the new regime is unable to bring back the climate and academic excellence they had achieved earlier. And same story is repeated elsewhere. There are, I can go on giving examples, it will take uh, next uh, half an hour, but a few illustrative points, which refers to the role of a university or higher education, which is the symbol of higher education. Uh, university is supposed to give liberal education. 
universal liberal education. Therefore, it is a university. Ravindranath Tagore is one such uh, person who had a vision of universal education uh, where mind is free and uh, without fear and this kind of vision he had and we pursued it and we took this university education from the British and fortunately though they talk about uh, the present government talk uh, blames uh, the colonial rule and the mindset of the British but actually the education that they delivered to us was not much different from what they were teaching at Oxford and Cambridge. The humanities and sciences had the same subjects, so they did differentiate. And you know, all the first generation of uh, IS category and the leaders also, they were educated in those, these colleges and universities. So they had liberal education, which is focusing on broad-mindedness, acceptance of diversity, then intellectual excellence, curiosity. These are the things which university education or higher education promotes. Now, what is happening now? It is exactly the opposite. In the name of Indianized education, in the name of our ancient tradition, in the name of Vishwa Guru concept, they are forcing universities to accept a certain kind of education. Now, for example, and what is risky is those who oppose this kind of education, they are then blamed, they are criticized, they are trolled, their lectures are banned. Uh, in some uh, intellectuals like uh, Anand Teltumde, he was uh, with the UAPA, uh, draconian law, and he was in jail for two, two years. Then uh, another example is of a uh, great intellectual from Ashoka University, uh, I forget his name, uh, he, he was... Uh, uh, yes, Pratap, Pratap Bhanu Mehta. Yes, Pratap Bhanu Mehta. Uh, he was writing uh, uh, analytical essays in uh, uh, Indian Express and suddenly the management told him that he should stop uh, writing to these uh, journalism, journalistic uh, articles. And uh, then he was pressurized uh, and then he decided it is better to quit his post. I think he was vice chancellor. Uh, rather than quit uh, journalism, because he said, as an intellectual, I must express myself. Without expressing yourself and your ideas, he, he doesn't exist. So he left the college, uh, university, Ashoka, and students uh, went on strike, and students asked the management that we should have this faculty. He's a very important faculty. And they were fighting for uh, uh, the fact uh, uh, of Bhanu Mehta, and management and the state were against him. And ultimately, he uh, assured the students that uh, I will not be, be effective in this kind of situation. And his statement is very important. He said, it is impossible to give liberal education when the state is not liberal. This is the summary of the present situation. The state is non-liberal. Liberal, and we are talking about giving liberal, actually they don't believe in liberal education. And uh, it, it is guided by a particular political ideology. I stay in Pune and I can quote the recent examples to what happened to our uh, Pune University campus. Uh, there is a Lalit Kala Kendra, Ananda and Ashutosh knows about it. They stage, the students stage a uh, skit. It was meant for only a small audience of reviewers, faculty, and uh, participant students of 25 people. And it was a parody of Ramayana. And then somebody, other uh, students, uh, rushed into the uh, theater of the uh, Kala uh, Kendra and uh, damaged the property. Uh, there was rioting on the campus and so on. And the irony is the head of the department of this Kendra was called by the police and those who vandalized, they were scot free. And I, I heard that uh, the head of the department, very devoted uh, faculty member, he was very much depressed. 
so this is what is happening happening to intellectuals and who are committed and this is the mahol in which they are we have to work now uh, i can go on like this but what is the real problem the real problem to my mind uh uh the 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 intentions of the government is uh, quite visible and they are also openly talking about it they want to have a kind of rashtra they had in mind of course they had a setback in the recent elections but they are committed to this they want a particular kind of india and they will go with that but there is another dimension to it it is not only political ideology of hindutva that is operational there is a ideology economic ideology which is broadly called as neo liberalism and this is the trend in uh, higher education neo liberalism has brought in state promotion of private universities so right now there are more private universities than public universities and you know the impact impact will be the fees will be higher it will be costly and certain sections of uh, the society will not be able to take higher education so they will be deprived of employment opportunities so this is the impact of privatization and this kind of policy and they go together this, this, this is why the present government though they have a uh, uh, not in, impressive report about governance but still they are in power because this kind of economic policy and this kind of fascist ideology they are matching and they are going strong now the question is uh, what is the solution uh, personally i feel uh, i have stated my thesis as getting because making strong uh, sandening our institutions but this is one part but immediately we require devoted committed faculty this is number 1 i will quote you one example recently a few months ago i met a very uh, important person in the sense he was the vice chairman of ugc the top apex body of higher education and he was a director of i think uh, nac a body which regulates uh accreditation and uh, uh certification and also uh, the rating uh so he said and he uh, he said that often people ask me why i left my position as a vice chair and uh, he said it was a private conversation and that i i told people that i try to reform and inform my top bosses that there is something wrong in our system and we must improve upon it and he said that i was telling this to the chairman of the uc for one whole year but nothing happened so in the end i decided there is no point in this kind of position and i left and actually there was a press report which said that this person actually didn't resign he he sent a letter to the chairman about the problems of nac implementation of nac and what can be done to improve it and the chairman took it as a resignation and told him he really he was relieved from his post actually he was forced out so this is what is happening if you resist if you go against it they you have to leave so how can this system improve this is a question and secondly he also told that the worst thing that is happening in the appointment of vice chancellors is that earlier vice chancellors in pune university jaikar and dattavaman puddar even uh, gowarikar wasn't go they were stalwarts in the field and they were invited same thing happened to the initial years of iims and iits uh, ravi mathai of iim amdavad was invited by uh, vikram sarabhai ha huh? uh, he was invited and then he was supported 
But now what is happening in you know the vice chancellor uh, appointment is it is advertised. Yeah, obviously, it appears it is a rational method. You invite application, you rate it, and take the most talented person. But in reality, with this kind of uh, system of advertising, there is a lobbying going on, and the person who is interested, he takes. Uh, uh, recommendation of the state, and then he is appointed. So, therefore, all these appointments. I think somebody, political leader, said all appoint all vice chancellors of present universities in India are RSS people. He bluntly said it. So, uh, if this is the situation, what can happen? So, competent people. Meritorious people must be recognized and supported, but how it will happen is a more complex, complicated question. I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kanalokar. Rukhaya, then you have something to say. Yes. Uh, I want to bring out that. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sushit. I am happy to hear you because I know your sister, Seema Toraskar. She told me that you are yeah. going to speak today on this forum. Yes. And, and so uh, I want to bring out one more major issue in the higher education since sir was talking about higher education and that all of us are reading recently what is happening in NEET and uh, what happens in paper leaks and other things. So that is again making a mockery of exams, making of teaching, learning, you know, we don't care about pedagogy and all that. So with that, one issue which we've been talking for 30, 40 years, which is about brain drain. I want to place it on record today that it is actually increasing. Earlier, people were doing IIT, IIMs, and then going ahead, going to other countries of the world. But today, the, the situation is that uh, uh, upper middle class parents have money, so they are sending their children for undergraduate level, not postgraduate level. And with that, the brain drain is going to, in next five years to 10 years, it's going to only increase because as a young age, they understand the kind of problems that the society has, the lawlessness and disrespect to law and all other problems. And there they find that there is a better life available. And therefore, those children who are going after 12th standard, they really don't want to come back. And that is where it is going to be far more difficult situation in 20, 30 years from now. And we have not realized this. Thank you. So, um, uh, can I ask a question? Uh, yes, so, please. Yes, please. I have a comment to make. Please. And this has also to do with Rukaiya Zoshi's comment that IITs and IIMs are doing apparently all right. IITs, unfortunately, have not produced a single technological innovation which will help a common person in India since its inception. This question I have asked in various forums of IIT and none of them could cite a single technological innovation which will help an Indian in any field. So what has IIT achieved is a question. And therefore, we must understand that our education and particularly higher education has been typical traditional Brahminical ethos where learning has nothing to do with anything productive, anything socially useful. I hope I am being harsh, but it is to be taken a bit seriously. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Aran, I just want to clarify. When I made a reference to IITs and IIMs, I was looking from running the institutions, the hardware part of it, 
where the schools are very poorly run, where the, your and my tax money is completely going to drains. But that is going, going waste in IIT in a major way because it is not contributing anything to any technological solution which is faced by Indians in any field. I am also, I'll come back to, okay, but in IIT, because it is technology, it is hardcore. If you know any innovation of an IITian, while he is in IIT, when he is out of IIT, which has helped in a small way any problem of Indians, whether it okay. is dying on chulha gas to anyway. I won't go into this. Right. I have my view. Think about it. Right. So there are there are attempts so, made. It's an issue which we can discuss at some other time. Right. right, um, right. Uh, IIT Madras, IIT Mumbai have been doing it, but we can do, uh, discuss at different uh, times. That's right. 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 Yeah. So uh, uh, we before we open uh, the uh, forum for more questions from uh, the audience, uh, I have to make a few points. Uh, to highlight what are the challenges and some of them have been mentioned earlier but if, uh, i have been hearing uh, both uh, i'm sorry the three speeches and the whole situation whether it is in pre primary education primary education school education or higher education uh, it appears to be very depressing yes a lot of uh, money is being spent and there is no outcome uh, which we wanted. And I think Professor Karandikar was talking about effectiveness of IIT uh, education. Efficiency there may be, it may be very efficiently delivered compared to other institutions, but it is not effective. Uh, now, the new in this scenario, new education policy is presented as a departure and as a um, uh, as a uh, solution to raising the quality of education and you have highlighted that the new education policy does not answer any of these basic ills and, and one of the primary reasons uh, rukayaji pointed out was the teacher pupil ratio and uh, the government has published figures which I do not believe because I have access to grassroots level data. Uh, government has published uh, figures saying that only 25% of the schools in India have a class strength of more than 30. The ideal class strength should be 30 students in a classroom. But according to the government, only 25% of the schools in India have more than 30 in a classroom. But actually, if I look at the private unaided, uh, private aided schools in India, uh, in Maharashtra, I find that most of the private aided schools have class strengths above 50, 50 and above. So the same goes for teacher pupil ratio. The government says that the average teacher pupil ratio is uh, for one teacher. There are 23.4 students in the new education policy, and it should be brought down to 20. But this is not true, according to my information. The teacher pupil ratio is 1 is to 50, which means that if you have to double the number of students, you will have to double the number of teachers, classrooms. And for this, you will have to spend money. You will have to spend money. And none of the governments except Delhi have been prepared to spend that kind of money on education. And we have seen that Delhi government has succeeded in improving the hardware, which you mentioned, Rukayaji, the hardware that is the infrastructure as well as the software of education but they have spent 25% of their budget on school education. And they have brought about a complete reversal, which means that actually uh, what you were saying about some of the European countries or foreign countries making education free 
it is possible in our country by following our own models we don't have to go to any other model if you follow the model which was followed by delhi government it is possible to bring about a change but for that you require of course stool deficiency right you have the conviction to spend that much money for the future of our country so that is one model and secondly uh, you said about the uh, efficiency of iits and iims which is definitely there effectiveness is not there there is something defective in that model because it is not connected as dr karandikar rightly pointed out it is not connected to the problems which common people face in our country uh, so that has to be corrected but in these institutions there is a certain level of efficiency achieved because teachers have been given autonomy infrastructure has been provided at an at a more than adequate level and fees are reasonable fees were reasonable once upon a time in iits and iims no longer they are reasonable but if these conditions are established and teachers are given autonomy even in our other even in our country colleges can do wonders so the new education policy of 2020 took american system as the model it is nothing but simply a, a, a copy of the american higher education system largely and uh, we don't have to go uh, to that level we have our own models so far as uh, literacy is concerned kerala has shown the way that literacy has to be connected with problems of everyday living then you can achieve better results at a much faster rate so when we have these models in our country uh, we need to have the conviction to implement those suggestions and of course you require spending Uh, a large part of your budget on education and education is such an important aspect of the country's future not only country's future but in humanism to learn continuously to learn without limits is a hallmark of being human and therefore to be human means to be able to learn without limits and that is a very fundamental thing uh, in humanism and therefore we all need to raise our voice in uh, support of education for all and free education for all so uh, these are some of the things which i thought we should highlight uh, from the humanist platform uh, now we are open to questions i just make one observation if you allow me please please please, please. Uh, so when Please you talked ahead. about the students teachers ratio and your data says that the uh, the number is dwindling we must take it in the context that this data is only of public schools which are government schools you may and uh, the uh, the the schools which are private where the students uh, uh, teacher ratio continues to be an issue except for one which you mentioned where 1 lakh or 2 lakhs 1 lakh per month also is the fee 1 lakh per year jane do 1 lakh per month also there is a fee so there the students ratio can be as the management decides to have so right. uh, i am saying higher education has a larger problem right where the students teacher to uh, students teacher ratio is above 100 and whenever there is more number of students seeking less number of seats the government finds the easy way out of increasing the number of uh, students in a class from 90 to 95 to 100 to 105 120 and that's how they are not able to manage the students teacher ratio and that becomes the problem for the quality of learning right, teaching right. I invite Dr. Bung to uh, make his comments. Dr. Bung is uh, also uh, a marketing professor. He was the director of a management institute, and now he is a consultant. He runs his own consulting firm called Prakman Consulting. Dr. Bung. Yeah. 
you have to unmute dr bang you have to unmute yeah uh three specific issues quickly uh, they are related to higher education first one is uh, this ranking and accreditation which uh, has become rampant in last few years the ground level experience is that and this is my hypothesis which is subject to research uh many of the parameters are inversely proportional to the quality of the education or probably i can go to the extent of saying that they are adversely affecting the quality and more importantly the fraternity inside the uh, among the faculty members in the institutes all higher education like for example one of the parameters is uh, research and publication and the kind of things which are going on and and uh, most of the institutes now have become private universities and private institutions all the private management institute uh, private not just management all kind of private professional universities are putting pressure on their faculty to raise the performance on so called research and all kind of practices are going on unethical and what not you scratch my back i scratch your back all these things are and this is very well known that is point number 1 point number 2 is regarding the placements as far as the professional institutions are concerned now uh, too much of focus on placements is taking away the academic uh, pursuits of all these institutions and uh, third point is related to the efficiency especially about the iims now if these are iims if these are indian institutes of management we need to find out how many are producing managers and how many are producing non managers now if you look at their placement records more than 70% are in non managerial jobs they are either in investment banking or they are into consulting or they are into financial institutions in fact so much so that the kind of people which they are drawing are those who don't really want to manage so this is what uh, that is and the last point is look at the kind of infrastructure that they have and the kind of money that they are pumping in are they really efficient yesterday only there was news about the iim rohtak director who seemed to have siphoned off some 3.2 crore rupee of salary last year now can you believe a director of iim and he is the same person who had done some so called research which is actually pedestrian research connecting tablighi jamaat to uh, spread of corona his name is some sharma and he was the uh, he was a faculty at iim ahmedabad at one point of time so this is what is the situation so less said the better even about the efficiency forget the effectiveness about the at least of the iim science thank you dr bang may i invite uh, my friend mr sudhir kandotra to make his comments sudhir is a long time uh, humanist and he stays in delhi and uh, professionally he is into library systems uh, and otherwise he is uh, the uh, india uh, coordinator of silos message so sudhir ji thank you ashish bhai for this opportunity uh, uh, but i'm sorry i have no other comment than saying that the education is dead and uh, the dead body is being killed every day and people are being given the hope that everything is fine only you have to pay a little more and you'll get educated and your children will get better so it is not happening i'm directly dealing with it uh, domain and i find that 95% of the pass out from b c a b tech m tech are not you cannot justify paying them 1000 rupees per month that is their job so uh, sorry i'm quoting the date but i think chapter he spoke very rightly about this the time has come to bring a revolution of the mind heart and action and i think if we can spend time to build on the view of what would be the universal human within all the aspects of education and economy everything can be explained how it can be 
because people are probably thinking that the world has come to where it is supposed to be. But as Dillo said, that human being to do that is not possible. We were not 200 years ago what we are today. We were not what we are today. We were not that 1,000 years ago or 5,000 years ago. Why, why we want to think that nothing can change or things will be just slightly better here and there, but everything is fine? I think this view needs to be more discussed. Where and how we can go forward in a way which is which would lead to uh, actually find people like Mahatma Gandhi a million times. We have enough resources to raise to give a higher, higher middle class level in India. Everybody in the world with only 4% I think he has lost connectivity. He has lost. Okay. Anyone else would like to make any comments? Yes. Uh, hey, Panji. Ashtoji, if, yeah. Yes, I, yeah, I would like to uh, add. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Sudhirji. Uh, I've been enlightened uh, by the various uh, you know inputs regarding the inadequacy in the education system. Uh, right from the preschool to the higher education. And uh, my concern is more, uh, you know, uh, with the points raised uh, by our uh, speakers, Rukhaya ji and our uh, Dr. Anand ji, uh, regarding the mother tongue being the medium of uh, education in the preschool and, uh, if not, uh, in the primary education also. And our uh, new education policy, as also called national education policy, uh, it, uh, it 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 uh, you know gives lip service to that uh, aspect, saying that uh, the pr primary education will be in mother tongue. And uh, I was uh, on the you know team of advocates who petitioned in the High Court of uh, Madras Madurai bench for the translation of the draft education draft new education policy itself to the 22 languages of uh, Schedule 8 of the Constitution of India. And the central government was not ready to do that. The uh, advocate representing the central government in the court said that, that is not, uh, we are not legally bound to do it. And we expect these people to actually make available teachers in the, uh, you know, uh, the mother tongues in all the schools. So that is the, you know, uh, hypocrisy, the level of hypocrisy that we are dealing with when it comes to the government policy and its implementation. And another la layer of my concern regarding the mother uh, tongue or you know the motherly education is you know it, i would uh, you say that you know the humanist education i would say the motherly education wherein uh, we transform this scenario of competitiveness to cooperative uh, you know education toto chan you know uh, is a book that i would uh, recommend for all teachers in the primary and uh, preschool uh, thing and uh, rukeji also rightly pointed out that the Japanese education uh, focuses on character building in preschool, in primary school. And uh, the Chinese education, it focuses on, uh, you know, value addition. You know, it teaches uh, the ch uh, children to uh, grow vegetables, uh, you know. Uh, that, so, and uh, we are lagging behind, we are lacking in, you know, this approach, this humanistic approach to education uh, by and large, and specifically the preschool and primary education. We need a cooperative model, a cooperative atmos atmosphere, and uh, this examination system, it is becoming a cutthroat, it is creating cutthroat uh, a competition and cutthroat people, I would say. And that is where we need to, uh, uh, you know, focus and uh, that is where we humanists need to uh, put in our energies and, uh, you know, address this issue immediately. And uh, I think uh, I, I, I'm enlightened, I, I, I'm energized, by you know the various uh, inputs here by the various speakers, and I thank uh, uh, you know the organizing uh, team for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Advocate Mayapan. Thank you. Anyone else would like to make a speech? I'll invite. Uh, I wish my... to take only one minute. Yes, please. The, the, I'm Satish. Uh, I wish to bring to the surface some observation that those who are the ambassadors of education in mother tongue, they themselves send their 
pupils in english medium school so how this spreading education in mother tongue will be effective when they themselves don't believe that giving education in mother tongue will be more effective and it will improve the quality of the school this is what my observation and this is i wanted to bring it to the surface i want to make one more uh, uh, comment or rather a declaration uh, i am also the coordinator for the uh, world march 3 uh, for you know world without wars and violence and we have uh, presented you know on this teachers day a permission letter to the chief education officer for uh, conducting uh uh not art competition but art activities i had initially written as art competition because that's what they were asking for i said no 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 this is our core you know humanistic idea that it's not a competition it is a cooperative uh, uh, scenario where everybody contributes and everybody is given a participation certificate everyone is a winner so today i had you know uh, made a change in the letter and i again represented it so i just wanted to make the right. thank, thank you dr abu would you like to make your comments dr abu Dr. Abu is not there. It seems. Anand, Anand has raised his hand. Thank you, Mithin. Yes, I, please. Yeah. Can I make a small yes, observation? Please. Yes, please. Based on what Satish Marathi ji has said, I don't know, but we have a group of persons who strongly advocate at least primary and pre-primary education in mother tongue. to my knowledge none of our group persons including myself have sent our children to english medium school and my daughter hasn't suffered she has an extremely good academic career professional career thank you okay. so we we so, we did not in, use english even at home when the child was young even in our conversation so right. the child is exposed to only mother tongue when the child is born up to at least 3 years so there is research on that okay fine so uh, may i invite lakshmanan ji to make concluding remarks and propose a vote of thanks i think <laughs> Do, we don't want any conclusion because we discuss about the uh, problems the challenges the education system of india is facing so my uh, humble suggestion is that in a debate like this we can discuss uh, we can discuss these problems but what we will do for the change so the educationalist of india should join in a platform at least to tell these truth to the common people the government will not uh, take any any decision because the government is withdrawing from the education they are promoting uh, un unaided education because they are uh, giving it to the private par parties but uh, uh, in kerala and in delhi the governments are giving much fund to the school education they have improved the facilities so the public schools increased the uh, number of students also but in kerala also the mania for the english education is uh, is pretty that is a big problem in kerala also i think anand ji uh suggestion is very apt for this uh, problem so i am giving thanks to rukaiya joshi anand ji sushil ji and vasan uh, bang sudhir and advocate meyapen bibul ji ashdosh ji and i think we can meet again to discuss some uh, solution solution problem a solution part i think <laughs> we can do that that is okay thank you very 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 uh, uh, dynamic uh, 
discussion was there today where uh, various uh, aspects were discussed and uh, uh, really uh, I feel that uh, this of uh, having such uh, online meetings uh, where we discuss uh, real themes related to our life should be discussed. I think I'm uh, extremely happy to see uh, full-hearted participation from all sectors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Quit Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Peace, force, and joy to everybody. Peace, force, and joy to all. Peace, force, and joy. I'm uh, awaiting the recording. Now I want to share it with uh, you know the world. Ashtoji. Peace, force, and joy to everyone. Thank you. Very much.